you look at the first PhDs, the structure, like when I read about the first PhDs, it was like literally like a very small number of people at one institution that studied now stuff that people studied in the fourth year of their undergraduate. Right? Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, and then, and then the, the funny thing is as time has gone on, the number of PhD has gone up. So the number, the amount of research that is available to somebody, like when you start your PhD, the amount of research and work that is going to, that has been done in computer science for you versus the amount of somebody that started a PhD in computer science in the 1950s is like lifetimes worth of study. Like you could spend like eight hours a day, five days a week, you could spend multiple lifetimes trying to read all the material out there and you would never finish it. Another way to say that is, and that's because, you know, computers didn't exist until the 1950s. So you literally had 70 years of, of academic work, but you've had 70 years of academic work with hundreds of thousands of people doing it. Right. And so now, now, if you look at a PhD candidate that enters in the 2020 versus a PhD candidate that entered computer science in 1960, the amount of information that the PhD candidate in 1960 has to process versus the amount of information that the PhD candidate in, in 2020 has to process, they're not even on the same level of, they're, they're orders of magnitude different, right? But the structure of the degree hasn't changed much. And so there's no real systemic transformation of the, of the dominant paradigm, which is if we're serious about, like it, it, we really have to transform the entire educational system so that somebody in today's world actually has enough time to marinate on the idea. And this is, this is why you know, some scholars will actually like challenge the idea that PhDs should launch, you know, the, the, standard, the standard claim is like, okay, if you 18 years old, you finish high school, four years for college, there's the dominant narrative. I completely disagree with it, right? Four years for undergraduate, five years for a graduate school. But personally, one of the things that I would like to see, you know, five or six years in undergraduate or change the structure of high school education so that the last two years you can start to like, you actually get to start to specialize a little bit, right? And that, that undergrad is funded and then PhD process, instead of having to, you know, figure out everything that you want to do pr prior to committing to the PhD process and then like just allow those structures to change a little bit to reflect the 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 amazing nature of the academic work that's been produced in the last 60 to 70 years right but in order for that change to happen the scholars that control this process have to be humble enough to recognize that just because they went through emotional pain doesn't make them special in such a way that their students should have to survive the same thing, right? That to be conscious of that, of that shift. And, and that's one of the reasons that I think it's one of the gifts that I want to give you. And if, if Steve had, or still wants to um, get, uh, get involved with education, the, the, one of the forums that I want to cultivate in this space is really a, 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 a mechanism by which as you navigate those spaces, you become very educated, quite well educated on the aspects of the teaching job directly related to um, academic systems based on the knowledge in that field. Because in the absence of this type of forum, the current systems have no, no mechanisms that are gonna be offered to you in that space. Um, you know, but that, that's a much larger conversation about the structure of, of higher education, right? But it is, it is interesting because that theme is playing out live in this small group that we have. That, that challenge that, you know, and, and Steve is, is um, making a decision based on that. And I fully respect that decision and I'm going to do everything that I can to support it. But even still, imagine, imagine a system where someone like Steve has the type of is able to navigate those pressures while keeping alive, you know, the, those larger questions that he had previously, right? And that, that would be a student-centered system.